Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stop stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister calls for more regional attention on the withdrawal of correspondent banking services. More young St. Lucians receive training under the National Apprenticeship Program. The new faces of democracy show up in the nation's youth. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. St. Lucia's Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney has called for increased attention by CARICOM leaders on the withdrawal of correspondent banking services from the region as well as blacklisting by the European Union. Honorable Chastney made the call as he delivered his outgoing address as chairman of the Caribbean community. Prime Minister Chastney took over the chairmanship in July of 2019 and gave an account of the 31st intersessional meeting of the Conference of Heads of Governments of the Caribbean Community underway in Barbados. Here's Janelle Norvell. Prime Minister of St. Lucia and immediate past chairman of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, Honorable Alan Chastney, speaking at the conference highlighted a number of challenges confronting member states, including climate change, blacklisting by the European Union, adversities facing small island states in the international community, the ongoing situation in Venezuela, and the risking in the region. The risking refers to the restriction of correspondent banking relationships or business services from major global banks to certain jurisdictions due to concerns over money laundering or potential involvement in financing of terrorist activities. Prime Minister Honorable Shazni highlighted how crucial it was that CARICOM continues to lobby to have these issues addressed. In November last, as a, a direct result of St. Lucia meeting, a delegation from the community led by the distinguished Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda took the issue of correspondent banking and de-risking to Washington in light of the threat of our financial institutions losing critical relationships with U.S. banks. I can report that we have moved the needle on de-risking and that the OECS is working on a single compliance department. We were able to draw the attention of the members of the Financial Services Committee of the United States Congress and senior representatives of major U.S. banks, including the Bank of America, to the catastrophic effect which the stringent measures being imposed on domestic banks by correspondent banks in the United States and the negative impact which the withdrawal of such services was having on economies in the Caribbean member states. The Prime Minister disclosed that up to mid-2018, 25% of the 50 banks operating within CARICOM countries had reported termination of correspondent banking services, while 75% reported that they were facing certain correspondent banking restrictions. Other negative consequences include an increase in operational costs, an extension in the processing time for international payments, and increased difficulty in account opening or securing banking services. The Prime Minister noted another issue plaguing the region, that of blacklisting. He indicated that a CARICOM delegation interfaced with the European Union on the troubling issue which still exists today. Member states of the community, however, continue to take the necessary steps to comply with the demands of the regulating agencies. But while they do, countries in our region are still being penalized. Some of us remain on the gray list, while only one member state remains on the black list. We must continue working until all of us are off the list. But more importantly, we must make every effort to ensure that this undemocratic and discriminatory practice of a public blacklist is discontinued. The 31st Intercessional Meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM was held on the 18th of February 2020. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The National Apprenticeship Program, NAP, is continuing to fulfill its mandate of providing training and employment opportunities for St. Lucia's unemployed youth. Anissi Antoine reports on the latest cohort of trainees under the Tourism Hospitality Program conducted in partnership with Monroe College. The National Apprenticeship Program through the Monroe College International Hospitality Training Institute will be providing a second leg of hospitality training to over 50 young persons from the constituency of Ancillary Canaries. The three-month program forms part of an initiative by the Government of St. Lucia to help alleviate the high unemployment rate amongst our youth. 
Director of the National Apprenticeship Program, NAP, Dr. Windy Mosheri, encouraged the apprentices to make the most of the opportunity. You have started a journey that we at NAP and at Monroe will assist you, we will help you to go right through this journey and to complete it successfully. About three years ago, the government of St. Lucia, recognizing that unemployment was extremely high among the young persons, especially in the South, decided to begin the National Apprenticeship Program. And the mandate that we have is to train young persons, unemployed persons, give them skills, give them knowledge that they need to become more employable, as well as getting you employment opportunities. So we will get you to interviews, but NAP does not give you jobs. I want you to, to, to bear this in mind. We take you to the interview, but you have to sell yourself at the interview to get the job. Recognizing that not everyone is as able, the government of St. Lucia is absorbing 33% of the cost and the participants will contribute the balance. Additionally, each student will receive a stipend of $500 monthly. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries and Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Canaries, Honorable Dominic Fede, noted that the best thing a government can do for young people is to empower them to become independent. If there is one thing that I will feel proud is that I have been able to be associated with during my tenure as Parliamentary Rep is this. Not fixing the roads. Not fixing the roads. Not creating buildings or fixing playing fields. But investing in you and building you and giving you the best chance for you to become the best versions of yourself. That's why we do this. This is for you. Tanisha Lansiko, trainee of the National Apprenticeship Program, expressed gratitude to the government of St. Lucia and the Monroe College for the opportunity. I do believe that I will achieve much more experience in hospitality and I would encourage all young people to do take this program and it will help them in life and will help them in the future. Upon completion of the program, the trainees will be placed on internships within the hospitality sector. The opening ceremony for the National Apprenticeship Program took place at the Millet Community Center on Tuesday, February 18, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness holds meetings to discuss, review and evaluate St. Lucia's level of preparedness for a possible case of the coronavirus. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. As the Department of Health and Wellness continues its effort to ensure preparedness to manage the threat of coronavirus, a review meeting was held on the recent incident of an individual treated as a suspected case of coronavirus. The meeting provided participants with the opportunity to identify gaps and to make necessary recommendations to strengthen the country's response to the coronavirus. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says the dialogue was extremely important as it allowed them to identify the shortcomings in response to the recent incidents and to chart the way forward. This really provided us with an opportunity to test our national plan and our protocols to date. We were able to do a review from his coming to the Sufre Hospital. We had the team from the Sufre Hospital there to, to give us feedback on what occurred and how it occurred. And we were able to look at what was done and how it was done in an effort to improve the situation. Very integral was the, the Victoria Hospital. The, the medical director was there as well. So she was able to walk through everything that happened that evening. And she was able to point out what worked. And also she was able to identify some of the gaps that exist um, at Victoria Hospital. Dr. Belma George expressed the Department of Health's commitment to make the necessary changes in the management of a possible case of the coronavirus to our shores. 
Some of the gaps that we've noted so far is that we have to increase our surveillance. Our healthcare workers have to better be, be more aware of the environment that we are in and ask the relevant questions. Also, we noted there was a level of, of panic at the hospital initially, which I think may have been expected, especially for the first possible case. So going through the, the days happening with him coming into VH, it really helped us to, to see where we need to put extra resources to, to be able to, to manage. We also looked at the communication strategy that was used that night and ways of strengthening to ensure that the correct information is going to the public. The chief medical officer also reiterated that St. Lucia has no cases of the coronavirus. Reporting from the communications unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. St. Lucia, let's celebrate our 41st Independence Anniversary with a musical explosion. Friday, 21st February at 7 p.m., the City Center comes alive at the best of St. Lucia concerts. Enjoy performances, our best from the past and present. Invader, Ashanti, Her Black, T. Caro, Arthur, Michael Robinson, Tennyson John, Ricky T, Subans, and many more amazing talents will take Stage. Welcome back. San Lucia's youth relished the opportunity to be heard by the nation's leaders as they participated in the National Youth Parliament on Tuesday, 18 February. More on that in a moment, but first, the youth parliamentarians interface with the Cabinet of Ministers and help frank dialogue on many issues of national interest. Here's Danielle Dubois of the Communications Unit at the Office of the Prime Minister. It was a candid and informative exchange as youth parliamentarians joined the Cabinet of Ministers at their regular Cabinet meeting on Monday. The 17 youth parliamentarians are gearing up for the first sitting of Youth Parliament on Tuesday, 18 February 2020. After months of training and engagement, 17 young persons from around the island will fill the seats of our highest chambers the House of Assembly. Shine Savory, who is the youngest among the selected for the debate, expressed how forums like these are important and give them an opportunity to make a valid contribution to decision making. This morning, we were invited to Cabinet to have a word with some of the ministers. And this opportunity was really beneficial to us because we were able to hear from the actual parliamentarians who have this as their profession and being able to hear their experiences. We heard some advice for if we would like to become actual parliamentarians in the future. We got some advice on the proceedings. And hearing this as a youth parliamentarian, what is supposed to be mimicked in parliament from people who actually have experience, as they said, some going on 30 years of this experience, it was beneficial to to us being able to internalize it because even though it is a youth parliament we still have to take this seriously. The youth parliamentarians will serve a tenure of one year where they will be expected to engage in training, youth advocacy and community outreach. What we're doing this time around has never been done before is having the youth parliamentarians serve one year as their tenure. And of course, during that time when they're not necessarily sitting within the structure of the house, they will be responsible for community engagement, etc. So the youth parliamentarians would have already done community projects in December, where they were responsible for giving every child, one child, sorry, in their constituency a gift. They were responsible for feeding the less fortunate and, um, in their in Kashi um, Central. So then all of this is part and parcel of being a parliamentarian. So of course we want to give that practicality to it. So as I mentioned before, the one year stint as a youth parliamentarian will start in February and end when the new court is selected. Siobhan Bryan, who will serve as Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, went on to give details about the papers being laid at the House on Tuesday of this week. The motion that is tabled in the Parliament tomorrow is one that deals with education reform and not just the overall reformation of the system but we're looking at several other areas with the with the inclusion of technical vocational education training and we also are looking at the abolishment of the common entrance examination process the motion aims to bring out our proposals as a government to redefine how we approach holistic 
the, the holistic development of our students and the main areas that are targeting in the motion are the primary and secondary school levels. At the end of the session, the ministers gave each parliamentarian a token of appreciation in the form of a St. Lucian flag pin. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Danielle Dubois. And coming off that session, the young parliamentarians were eager to take their place in the parliament chamber. Under the theme, New Faces of Democracy, youth parliamentarians gathered in parliament on Tuesday for the Independence Youth Parliament debate. The youth debate sought to discuss a number of issues including education reform. The motion before parliament on Tuesday was the establishment of a national curriculum that is balanced and broad-based, which fosters the holistic development of the child. The education minister and member for Castry South, Alan's plant, tabled that motion. In the past years, our knowledge regarding childhood development has expanded, Mr. Speaker. At this stage, teachers, parents or guardians alike would want a lot more from their children's education that is in tune with each child's unique needs and skills and, that, and one that prepares for adulthood. Mr. Speaker, rather than characterizing school subjects, the holistic approach seeks to empower children to use their academic learning as a foothold for their social and measurable skills. A holistic approach in building our students must prepare them for their future and help them tackle any of life's uncertainties. So Speaker, an education system must focus the child as a whole, which means it must cater to the physical, emotional, social, and cognitive development of children. This, this in turn, creates progressive thinkers of society. Member for Gastry's North and Youth Prime Minister, Siobhan Bryan, deemed that the establishment of the national curriculum was integral to education reform. He says it begins at the primary school level with the introduction of an aptitude test. This aptitude test is not just meant to just be given to a primary school student, to a primary school student, sorry, and entered and assessed by the teacher. This aptitude test ensures that the parents are included in the dialogue. And we recognize the strength of families in this country, Mr. Speaker. Where the parents are involved, Mr. Speaker, holistically, the child develops at a more tuned rate, Mr. Speaker. A lot of the deficiencies that happen at homes, Mr. Speaker, they are transferred to the school system. You have children, Mr. Speaker, coming from broken homes, dealing with all social ills, drug abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse. And like the member for Cash South said, Mr. Speaker, all those factors come into play at the time a child may or may not decide to sit the common entrance examination. The Independence Youth Parliament debate was organized by the National Youth Council as part of activities for St. Lucia's 41st Independence celebrations. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle en Coyon. St. Lucia on the move to improve It's time to unite for the sake of tourism We need to restaurants, store operators, taxi drivers, craft and food vendors It's up to you and me to keep St. Lucia way above the rest Sharing your information is so important To grow our economy we're on the move to improve. Call the Ministry of Tourism at 468-4629 to be part of this movement. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle en Cuyon. Monsieur Tan, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, Department, qui est responsable pour information à gouvernement cette ci GIS, à CMB Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN, qui est Nouvelle en Cuyon. Président, Prime Minister Hutchinson. Le Rivadez qui a opéré à Grand La Place Castri, qui a trouvé facilité de nous voir tout de suite pour commencer à tout le monde comme des habitudes. Ce Rivadez là qui a retourné en placement de l'EFIO parce que le redéveloppement de Grand La Place Castri, qui a trouvé un finissement de la première phase pour ce projet. En préparation pour commencer la première phase là l'année qui passait, 
Si vous venez de la pour opérer des hauteurs, ça là, vieux établissement, les pompiers à sous la rue Jérémy. Présentement, cette table-là qui est nécessaire pour ces vêtements à servir, j'ai presque fini bâti. La caïnie a à peu près 100 tables qui sont en place pour y continuer tout le reste de vivre terre pour pratiquer. En ville Castri, cette table-là qui a aidé pour improuver de gré ces produits-là, ces produits de ces là qui ne plus et la caïnie plus la caïnie plus grande et plus facilité. Ces vêtements-là qui est aussi plus confortable. L'immeuble pour Vilcon cette castri, Peterson Francis, vous remarquez qui, est très appréciable pour dégouer patience ces vêtements là Il a ajouté qui, malgré il peut comprendre les raisons, il peut côtoyer, mais il est très critique pour mettre toutes les affaires qui nécessaires à place pour placer facilité ça d'ailleurs, plus mais dégouer et pour poursuivre assez les pour ces vêtements là qu'on du business yo. Première phase de développement, c'est la place Castri qui a une facilité qui bien couvert et puis grand fait taille, chambre qui est très confortable et table qui est tout neuf. L'autre phase là, c'est une place pour les gens établir des business, yo, place pour boire et manger et pour vendre divers articles pour le public la servir. Ce qui est pour bâtir, c'est un arrangement nouveau pour devant la, la place vis-à-vis de la Ward Castri, une grande facilité pour présenter divers manger. En y redégoué tout bonnement, les restaurants qui sont très confortables et qui portent un pile fraîche, aussi en place pour produire du travail um, de la main, travail du café par la main, et une chambre d'amusement facilité pour vendre viande et pression. Deuxième phase, là, il y a une facilité quand on s'est et avec sa web LT, Ville Castri, avec boutique côté où on s'est acheté à tes 100 pieds, pièces taxes à soi. Commune d'Elsé, en Choiseuil, qui est tellement une petite commune qui est très douce. Tout de suite, quand il y a un plus avancé restaurant, c'est ici. Restaurant qui a porté un soleil couché, qui a trouvé une autre destination de vacances, qui a porté une tête rouge, ça c'est d'Elsé. Restaurant neuf salas qui a préparé manger local, avec un petit goût italien, avec un service qui a ni pour le peuple, c'est ici, et aussi pour les étrangers. Directeur pour Tête Rouge, Paul Hugo, dit que produit local et vive la mer, il peut acheter tout ça hors les pêcheurs à village choisi même. Hugo a aussi félicité ce travailleur qui se résident dans Choisey pour dégouer le caractère de ce travailleur. Il y a vrai que Tête Rouge, c'est une petite facilité. Et puis, c'est un studio et un restaurant qui a pour tuer le service pour les le patron. Alors, selon Hugo, Laissez ces patrons ça la vle essayer yon l'autre restaurant là yo ka sa yo ka ni yon la ki pwe kote yo ka sa ni en bon déjeuner aussi ministre la ki ni responsabilité pour commerce industrie investissement affaire les consommateurs etc qui aussi c'est représentatif parlement pour choisir Saltivos on est Bradley Felix complimenté directeur Soleil Couché pour place la yo choisi pour bâtir projet ça là selon on est Félix c'est aussi ka vini vitement yon place pour ajouter agent doué les Grecs régionales et internationales pour établir le business. Le ministre a annoncé que, présentement, l'année en haut, il y a près de 5 billions de dollars pour placer un investissement en PIA en ce lot de l'année pour venir. Le ministre Félix dit que c'est le ci ni brisé ces facilités, comme tous ces investissements qui ont commencé à cette le ci Le représentatif parlement pour choisir là aussi renforcer pour un concerné bénéfice. Qui investissement ça la caille porté pour commune, il dit que ça pas seulement pour ces peuples-là qui ont trouvé l'employement, mais aussi bénéfice pour les communes, qu'on les cultivateurs et l'autre qui a servi la main pour produire divers articles. Une cérémonie pour te matcher, placement pour bâtir le restaurant, soleil couché, à Delce, choisi, qui est fait le 31 janvier. Ministre de l'Éducation. En collaboration avec l'agence Commonwealth of Learning, UNESCO et Hewlett Foundation, tu organisé un 4 jours atelier à ce façon pour bâtir la capacité concernant les ressources de l'éducation en chambre des études à l'école. L'initiative là a aidé pour réduire à ce quantité qui a coûté pour acheter des livres avec l'autre matériaux qui a aussi improuvé la capacité de l'institut. 
ressources éducation ça là qui fait possible pour trouver façon pour instruire apprendre et pour trouver matériaux de recherche qui est available pour le public là qui pas qu'à écouter l'argent pour payer pour eux ça qui fait possible pour trouver les sons sans pièces de restriction et c'est une occasion pour yon sa éduquer ko yo à dans différents degrés ministère de l'éducation et puis assistance UNESCO et l'autre agence qui a développé cette web pour aider à embrasser par son éducation ça là atelier de le 25 janvier et c'est comme ça nous trois bout nouvelle là mon cher monsieur autant pour regarder mon ca une invitation pour jeune et puis moi encore si Dieu conserve la vie n'ai pas cette autre nouvelle en créole après ça mon ca vie pour cette niche Merci on Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy, hazy and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with some widely scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the eastern Caribbean region for the next few days. Moisture and instability in the lower levels of the atmosphere will continue to cause occasional cloudiness and showers over the Eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. A plume of thick Saharan dust haze is expected to cause a significant reduction in visibility and air quality around the Eastern Caribbean during the next 24 to 48 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 12.55 p.m. and will be low again at 7.53 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 2.02 p.m and will be low again at 9.20 p.m. The sea is locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 7 to 10 feet or 2.1 to 3.0 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.25 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.